welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So today we are in After Effects, baby, and we are going to take a still photo, create a rain animation, and yeah, get it set for Instagram. Huh? Obviously, you could output to any size or resolution that you want for depending on where you're going to save it or publish the file, right? So let me show you what we're going for. All right, super cool, no? <laughs> Anyways, let me hide that out. We're inside of After Effects. I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff, but uh, yeah, actually, if I hide all these layers except for this background layer, you see this is just a still image, right? There is, there, it doesn't have any rain happening. So we'll come over here. We are going to delete these two compositions along with our solids. Uh, actually, just press delete on our keyboard, select delete, boom, they're gone. All I have now is a still image and I have the rain uh, sound effect. I'm going to come over here to create a composition and I'm going to make sure it's set to 1080 by 1080 pixels. And the reason for that is because I'm going to publish it to Instagram, right? Excuse me. Wow. I just had lunch. I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, this is going, we're going to call it rain animation. I've got it set for 10 seconds. Doesn't matter what the black background color is set to. I'll select OK. Next, we want to come over here and we drag this image in. I'm going to leave a link in the description where I found this image on Reddit. So if you want to download it too, you, you definitely can. huh? I'll right click on the image here. I'll come down to transform and then I'm going to select fit to comp width. When I do that, it basically enlarges this, the scale of this particular image to make sure that it fits the width of our composition. Next, we're going to change the position. I'll select the layer, press P on my keyboard. I'll come over here to the Y property and I'll drag this. And I'm, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. We're not necessarily going off pre-saved numbers. All I'm doing is trying to find out, hey, where does it look nice, huh? We don't need all the darkness on the top. We don't need all of the, the floor, right, for the rain. But we want to have enough of this ground to have the rain bounce looks super cool etc I think that looks good so we'll go ahead and close this out and the first thing that we want to do is create some rain puddles right uh, so what we'll do is we'll right click we'll select new select solid and we are going to change the color from black to 50% gray I'll come over here to the HSB I'll type in 50% for uh, black select enter and that creates a 50% uh, gray you'll see why we're doing that in a second I'm gonna call this ripples I'm gonna select OK then I'll come over here to the effects and presets and I'm gonna type in drizzle or start to type it, right? CC drizzle comes up, I'll drag this, I can drop it on the layer or I can drop it here. And you're gonna see that it creates these puddles, right? If I press spacebar on my keyboard, looking pretty cool. Obviously, we can make some changes here. If we uh, increase the drip rate, what we're going to do is increase the amount of puddles that we're seeing. For this particular composition, three is probably going to work just fine, right? Next, what we want to do is change the light. Right now, under light intensity, if we come over here and select from the blend modes, select it to overlay, you'll see we barely see it. Well, maybe see nothing, huh? Yeah, very, very little. In order to see it better, we want to come over here to the light intensity and change this to maybe a thousand. Bam. And now we can see the drizzles or the puddles quite a bit better. This light height, what it does is increase the contrast between the background and the, the puddles, if you will. So somewhere between the default value of 65 and 70 is going to work just fine for us. Next, if we come over to this layer, Notice the size of these puddles are quite large. So if we come to the position, not position, if we press S on our keyboard, select scale, and we drop it from 100%, maybe to between 70 and 80%, it will change the size of these puddles. And that's what we're looking for, right? I'm going to select the blend mode, put it back to normal so we can see this layer easier, right? And again, if I change this, you see that the puddle size is changing here. Huh? So again, between 70 and 80 is going to work just fine. Next, we want to change this to a 3D layer. So over here in the modes, we're going to click on the, uh, the little checkbox or the box beneath the 3D cube that turns it into a 3D layer. What that's going to allow us to do is rotate this in three different axes, right? So I'll come up here to my toolbar, I'll select the rotate tool, and then when I hover over this, you'll notice that the letters will change. That will mean it's only going to change in one position, right? So if I click this, it's only going to change in the Y position. I'll press Apple Z to undo. If I click somewhere else, I can rotate this in any position that I want. What I'm first going to do is come over here to the X, and we're going to rotate this, right? Rotate this, right? Come on, baby, you can do it. Ba, ba, ba. Somewhere like around here. 
First, I gotta drop this down. So we'll come back over here to the selection tool. I'll select this and I'll drag this puppy down. So what I'm gonna try to do is line it up how the street kind of ends in the distance, right? In our vision, something like that. Maybe I'll come back over here to the rotation tool. I'll select the X and we'll maybe rotate this a bit more. Let's see, something like, something like that, which means that we now have to bring it back up. I'll select the selection tool. I'll drag this puppy back up. Somewhere around there looks just fine. So you're probably gonna say to me, hey, wait a second, the street extends on both sides. Well, let's fix that. We'll come over here to effects and presets. We'll double click and we'll start typing motion tile. We'll see under stylize, we have motion tile. We're gonna drag this in over here under our uh, CC drizzle effect, or we could have dragged it onto the layer ripples, would have been done just the same, right? You'll see that there's an explanation point, yellow explanation point. The reason for that is if you look over here, this is an eight bit effect. And if we click on our project right here, you'll see we're working in 32 bits a channel. What it's telling us is, hey, this is gonna render out at a different uh, color depth than uh, your project is set to. So we're not worried about that. It's still gonna look good, don't worry. We're going to bump up the width here. And when we do that, you'll notice it starts tiling what we're working with, right? And maybe uh, 160, no, 180, bam. No, it looked like 190 was the ticket, huh? <laughs> that was just by accident. Next, uh, do we need to increase the height? It doesn't look like it, right? When I originally did it, you did, just because I had maybe a different rotation on this. And again, if we come over here to the rotation, make sure we're rotating, uh, sorry select this layer, make sure that we're rotating just in the X. Let's see, something, I don't want that, I just want the X, there we go. And if we come like this, maybe if we come like that, so maybe that's even better, and then we can come over here and put this to 110 or something, and now that fills up, and that's looking good. We'll come over here to the blend mode, we'll select overlay, and now if we press spacebar, we can preview what we're working with, right? So now we have these little puddles happening. You'll notice they're happening a little bit slow. That's because if we uh, rewind, right, and press play, it's because it is calculating everything. I'm doing a screen record, et cetera. So obviously when we play this in real time, when we have a little RAM preview, it looks, it's moving a lot faster. If you wanna increase or decrease the amount of drops, again, come to CC Drizzle and change the drip rate. So we're gonna close this out next. Usually when rain hits the floor, it bounces, right? We see some kind of bounce. So I'm gonna right click over here, say new. I'm gonna select solid. I'll make sure it's 50% great, which it is, because that's what we used last. And we are gonna call this bouncing rain. So when we press okay, next we'll come over to the effects and presets and we are going to type in part particle systems two, right? That's what we're looking for. Obviously you could use trap code particular. However, in this particular example, I'm trying to use just plugins that are included in After Effects, right? I'll drag this on top of bouncing rain layer right here and boom, we've added a particle emitter or system. Huh? So we want to change a few different properties, right? The first thing that we want to do is we want to change the birth rate, right? The birth rate, if we increase this, increases or decreases how many particles we're looking for. And what I'm going to do is change this to 0.1. That made it so we have a lot less particles. Our longevity is how long they live for, right? If we increase this number, you're gonna see more on the screen. If we decrease this number, you're gonna see less on the screen. And really, uh, we don't want uh, them to live that long because they're just hitting the floor, bouncing up, bada bing, bada boom. Right? So maybe to let you see this better, I will hide these other layers and now you can see our particles, right? Next, if I come over here into the producer, what the producer is going to say is, where is this coming from, right? If we increase our X radius, we are spreading this out into a line, right? And so in uh, when I originally set this up for the animation, I think I ended on 67 or something to that effect. I also dropped the radius uh, Y, which is how tall this is to zero, and that made it really just hitting on a line, right? Obviously, as far as the position is concerned, I'm not worried about like this right now because we can change that later. Next, inside of our physics, we're gonna wanna change the gravity. Right now, if I press spacebar and we see, these things just like look like they're fluttering, right? What I want them to do is be hitting the floor and bouncing up a little bit. In order for them to go upward, we need to put a negative value in our gravity. So a negative 0.5 ends up working. Let's go ahead and press spacebar. 
And that's what it looks like, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this physics out. I'm gonna close the producer out and I'm gonna come into the particle. Under our particle, we wanna change the color of these particles. So the birth color, let's, let's set it to all the way or uh, totally white. And our death color, let's click on blue somewhere around here and find like a grayish blue, something like that. Anyways, this, this can be, uh, you can play with this. What color you use obviously is gonna change the look of the particles. If you're watching in our uh, composition, you'll see that as I drag this around, it changes the look of the color, the particles. So what I'm looking for is a grayish blue mm, that's, uh, you know, in the middle, something like that. Huh? I'll click on okay, boom, and now we have this. If we turn back our layers below, you'll see it's very light here, huh? But if we come over here and we set this puppy to screen, uh, this should show through our particles quite a bit better. I'm gonna click on this. And one thing that I forgot, right? I think that, um, no, actually, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm selecting the selection tool with this layer selected. I'm going to drag it down. And what I'm trying to do is drag this down here to the bottom. You'll notice that this doesn't cover the whole area. If I go ahead and press play, you notice that we have these little bouncing uh, particles happening right here. If we bring this up somewhere around there, it's fine. But what we can do is come over here to the bouncing rain. I'm gonna press Command uh, D on my keyboard or Control D if you're on a PC. And now we have a duplicate. I'm gonna do that one more time. In the middle duplicate, I'm gonna make a change, right? I'm gonna change the birth rate from 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.1 to 0.4. Right, And so what that did is made this a little bit bigger. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move this puppy up. Next, what I probably wanna do, just to add some variation, the one in the middle, I guess, is my focal point of bouncing rain, right? Is maybe if I press uh, S on my keyboard, I can change the scale to 110%. It just will make these a bit bigger, and that's fine, huh? Next, in the final or the third one, I'm just gonna move this up above those, and now I have three different layers of bouncing rain, if you will, and if I bring this back to the beginning and press spacebar, boom. It looks like a little craziness is happening. Don't worry if that doesn't totally blend in your mind on what's going on because we need to add the rainfall. And when we do that, this puppy is all going to come together. Huh? So first things first, we're gonna click on this first one just to make this a little cleaner and then press shift, click on the third bouncing rain. We'll right click, we'll come over to uh, pre-compose. When we select pre-compose, we are going to type in bouncing rain comp. We're gonna say move all attributes to the new composition. We'll say, okay. What that did is now we have this composition of bouncing rate and we can make changes. Huh? If we decide that this is too much, uh, too much in our face, if we press T, we can drop the opacity maybe to 90%. That will do it to all three of them, right? So we can control everything from one uh, layer. Next, let's bring in the rain, baby. And let's do that by going up to layer, selecting new, selecting solid. And this time we are going to change the color from 50% uh, gray to 100% black. So if you put black 0% in H0, HSB, that's fine, say okay. Next, we are going to call this uh, foreground FG rain. I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. When I do this, we have something that's all black and that's okay. We'll come over here to effects and presets. We're gonna select rainfall. And you might ask me, um, if I start typing rain, we see rainfall right here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on uh, the foreground rain layer. And you might ask me, well, why did we make the layer black? It's because how we wanna set our blend mode. So remember, before we used overlay and screen and we were using 50% gray layers, for this, what we wanna do is uh, we want to use uh, screen here because we wanna hide all of this black and only show the rain. In order to do that, using a black layer was the right way to go, baby. Whew, wow, I'm talking fast, right? <laughs> Anyway, so over here, when we make changes here, the first thing that maybe we wanna do is bump this opacity to 100. When I do that, you can see these raindrops uh, quite a bit better. Next, in our scene depth, if we change this to 5,000 to, I don't know, 6,500, what we're saying is a starting higher and ending lower, you have a lot more travel of these rain, uh, the rainfall for the animation, right? If we want this, to, right now it's coming straight from the top down. No rain usually looks like that, right? It's usually coming at some kind of angle. So let's set the wind to 350 and notice it slanted everything a bit. And that's what we were looking for, right? Next, the size is a bit big. So if we set this to 1.75, for example, now what that did, you saw that, right? It made you see uh, less rain. If we bump this up, you see way more. And 1.75 for our particular scene, 
is looking mighty fine, if you ask me, right? <laughs> I crack myself up, huh? Next, if you wanted to, you could change this color or you could leave it like this. But I think these settings are just, they're gonna be all right for us, right? If we come over here and select, uh, set this to screen and we press spacebar, now you see the rainfall coming here. That's pretty cool. Let's do this. I'm gonna come over here to my layer, select FG rain, press command D on my keyboard. If you have a PC, control D, that's gonna make a duplicate of the layer. We'll select the duplicate layer, press enter on our keyboard, and we will type BG rain for background rain. Next, we are going to make a couple changes, right? The first change we're going to do is we are going to make this rain be 70% opacity, and then we're going to change the wind from 350 to 500. And by doing so, the background rain is going to angle differently. Let's change the screen mode from uh, screen to normal, and now we can make a position change. If I press P on my keyboard, I come over here to the Y property, and I drag this up, and I line this up right here. You see with the background, as I'm pointing to my screen, like you could see my finger. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you see in the, the line, the horizon line, well, that's what I'm trying to do is align this up on the horizon line, something to this effect, more or less. We'll switch the blend mode back to screen and bada bing, bada boom, it's looking mighty fine. I'm gonna press spacebar on my keyboard so you can see where we're at currently. Amazing. I mean, this is what we were going for, guys. The only thing that we're missing, if we come over here to project and we select the rain MP3, we drag this down underneath everything. Now, one of the things, this particular sound effect, if we open up this arrow here, open up this arrow here and look at the waveform, we'll see that it fades in. We do not want that. So all we have to do, because this is only a 10 second clip and the sound effect is longer than 10 seconds, all we have to do is click our layer, drag it over, and maybe start it uh, somewhere where it's in full sound Sound, right and that way there's no fade in whatever and obviously after effects is not <laughs> an L nle right yeah. you don't use this to edit add sound etc but if you're just doing a quick and dirty like i'm doing right now then you can do it right here and be finished and you don't have to bring in a final cut or premiere or whatever the case may be i'm going to drag this to the beginning and let's create a ram preview if i click on this button right here So I'm going to press spacebar to stop it. I'll drag my playhead back. All this green area is now cached in RAM. And so therefore, you, you may have heard the sound. The audio changed as the playhead got somewhere around here. And it was the computer saying, hey, I need help. I need backup. And I don't have backup, so we had to let the sound drop out. Actually, we didn't do anything. After Effects did it for us. But it was computating everything. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll press spacebar one more time. Amazing. Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. You found it useful, helpful, and you learned a little something. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, save the video, share it with your friends. It means the world to me. Until next time, I'm out.